Good morning. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Brian Scholes. I've been a pastor here at Our Savior since uh, 2006, so you could say that uh, Kathy and I go back a ways, not as many as uh, some of you. But uh, it was easy for me in thinking about what text to preach on today, because this past week, ever since the 1st of November, the church has been remembering the saints. November 1st is All Saints Day, because this year it falls on a Monday. Many churches will be observing All Saints Day tomorrow, including our saviors. And so that made it easy for me when it comes to our message today. I'll save the announcements for the end of our service, but hopefully you had a chance to either pick up or were handed a copy of the worship folder. If not, just raise your hand, and I'm sure that one of our ushers will be happy to bring you one. If you turn in your worship folder with me, you'll notice along the left-hand column of each page, you'll see some initials. The P is for the pastor, which I will be reading. The C is then for the congregation, which you will be reading. And so it is time, let us, oh, and I see some cell phones out. So if I could make the announcement, if you have an electronic device with you, if you would be so kind as to either turn that off or to silence it. And I invite you now as we begin our service to rise. And we make our beginning with the invocation. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You may be seated for our first hymn.
We continue with our reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Kathy and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue now with a time for family remembrances. Kathy was born in August of 1946. She was the beloved baby sister in a family of 10 siblings. Her mother lovingly referred to her as my baby. Kathy grew up on the east side of St. Paul. The family was poor and Kathy faced many challenges growing up. Her life would not be easy, but she would become a survivor and meet each challenge with determination. School was difficult for Kathy, and the educational system at that time could not meet her needs. Eventually, Kathy discontinued school, and staying home learned life skills from her mother, Grandma Minnie. As an adult, Kathy worked at the St. Paul Post Office Cafeteria in downtown St. Paul. Following that, she worked at Cheetah Bakery on Rice Street, owned by her sister and brother-in-law. Aunt Kathy loved both jobs and spoke fondly of them often. I recall taking a group of six of my students to the bakery one school day in order to work on the independent living skill of making a purchase. Most of my students have severe autism, so taking them into the bakery could have been very challenging. Aunt Kathy, Aunt Kathy welcomed all of us, myself, my students, and my classroom staff, as if we were royalty. I will never forget how thoughtful she was in helping each student choose a treat, pay for it with their own money, and wait for their change. After give, they gave her their dollar, of course. Kathy was, had great math skills, and this was really apparent at the bakery. It was magic. It was not the first and last time we went to the bakery. I had thought maybe it would be. We went a number of times after that. Aunt Kathy created magic in ways very few people know about. I was a witness to that, that quiet October, October day, and I will never forget it. Kathy was caregiver to her father for many years and eventually became caregiver to her sister. Kathy truly had a servant's heart. Kathy came to live with her sister Gloria and nephew Tom Jr. in 2018. And that was when she filled the gap that our family had been missing. She quickly became part of every celebration. She was included in birthday parties, picnics, and family gatherings. She loved every holiday, but Christmas was her favorite. The decorating of the Christmas tree at Gloria's was a huge event. Every light and ornament on that tree was a decorating priority. Every Christmas cookie had to be perfect. 
She especially loved the Christmas story of the birth of the baby Jesus. The days before her passing, we wanted to give her one more Christmas holiday. Setting up a small Christmas tree at her bedside and softly playing Christmas carols. Aunt Kathy and I spent quite a few days together this last summer. We spent time reading, perusing through my iPad, that was interesting, and doing a sort of craft projects. See, we had a new grand, or my mother had a new grandbaby who was a great nephew to um, Aunt Kathy and she wanted to make a few special things for the baby. So she made a piggy bank and painted it. And she used to tell me, I'm just the best painter, Jean. I'm just the best painter. She was really very good. I was really very impressed. We had a lot of laughs. And I learned to appreciate her more with the time we spent together. I will really miss the time we shared and the great conversations we had. She loved living at Gloria's. It was a safe place for her to be. Tom Jr. and Kathy bonded with discussions at the dining room table about current events or the Bible. Gloria, Tom Jr. and Kathy had many adventures. And most days would be out doing a bit of retail therapy, having lunch somewhere, or maybe an afternoon movie. She loved the trips to Florida. I especially remember the trip to Las Vegas. But we can't talk about that because what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> Kathy found that living with Gloria was safe, a security that she hadn't had much of in her life. She had a designated space on the love seat in the living room. To this day, when I enter Gloria's house and go up the stairs to the living room, I still look to see if Kathy is there. As Kathy's health declined, Gloria became the caregiver. Gloria honored a promise that she had made to her mother, my grandmother, in that she would always take care of Kathy. I am so proud of Gloria and we are so proud to be your daughters. During the last few days with Kathy, she told us she was waiting for an angel. We put the quilt with the angel embroidered on her bed, hoping that God would know that that was where he was supposed to go, bringing the angel. Her angel finally arrived, taking her to a better place, a heavenly home filled with love, we are all grateful for the time we had with Kathy. We will miss her, and she is forever in our hearts.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life, and he will not be condemned. They have crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth. The time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Our service continues with the scripture readings. Our first reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the New Testament book of Hebrews. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. This is the word of the Lord. And because at a time like this we can never hear too much good news, I invite you to rise as we listen again to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. The fifth chapter. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. They have crossed over from death to life. I tell you the truth. A time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. This is the gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. So declared the Lord God to his people, through Moses. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy, says the Lord. So wrote the Apostle Peter. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect, so proclaimed Christ himself in the Sermon on the Mount. So what do these three passages have to do with Kathy? And then just as importantly, what do these three passages have to do with you and with me? Well, they have everything to do with all of us, the living and the dead. Because scripture is very clear about one thing. 
without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So reads that New Testament book of Hebrews, and it bears repeating, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Now that book of Hebrews, it was written to a group of early Christians who had become discouraged. As a matter of fact, they were so disheartened that they were losing faith. As a matter of fact, it even went further than that. They were in danger of walking away from the faith, the Christian faith, and going back to their old ways. And the author of Hebrews, he wants to let his listeners, his readers know what's at stake. You have not come to a mountain that, cannot, that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. For if even an animal touched that mountain, it must be stoned to death. And the sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. But you, the author of Hebrews writes, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You've come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You've come to, the, you've come to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a better covenant, to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. So see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they didn't escape who refused him when he warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? And at that, that time, God's voice shook the earth. But now, as he has promised, once more, I will not just shake the earth, but I will shake the heavens as well. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken will remain. And then our reading concludes, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Well, we must go back now, keeping all this in mind, back to where I started. Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. So the Lord God declared to his people through his servant Moses. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy, because I am holy says the Lord. So wrote Christ's apostle Peter. And then Jesus himself put it this way, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we're back to the questions we started with. What does this have to do with Kathy? And then just as importantly, what does this have to do with you and me who are gathered here this morning. Without holiness, scripture declares, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And that bears repeating and taking to heart. Without holiness, not a single one of us has any chance of seeing the Lord. And at times like this, Especially at a time like this, we need to hear the God-honest truth. We don't need to hear cliches. We don't need to hear pious platitudes. And we can't trust in half-truths as well. It's only half-true 
that Kathy is now in a better place. And we must be careful of what we say at a time like this. Kathy's not now fully enjoying life eternal with her sister Darlene at her side. We can't get ahead of ourselves. We believe and we will confess in just a few moments the resurrection of the body is still to come. And that includes Kathy's earthly remains that are now confined to that little box. It's not just the soul that lives on. The body will be raised. And for the saints, for those who are holy, they will see their God, their creator, with their own two eyes. And without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Well, that leads to an even more, more pressing question this morning. Where does all of this leave Kathy? And then where does this leave you? And where does this leave me? How can sinners like us, how can we hope to meet our holy maker on that final day? We can't forget it because scripture reminds us, both in the Old Testament, but also in the New, that our God, the true God, the living God, the almighty God, is a consuming fire. And when the unholy and the impure come into contact with the holy and the perfect, what should we expect? We should expect to be burned or incinerated. And this leads, this leads to what this weekend is all about. And it leads to one of the most misunderstood words in the church today. And what word is that? It's the word saint, that little word saint. As I mentioned, even before our service began this morning, this past Monday was All Saints Day. And November 1st has long, long been celebrated as All Saints Day by the people of God. And since November 1st this year fell on a Monday, many churches will be observing this holy day tomorrow. And our Savior's is one of these congregations. And tomorrow morning, at just about this exact same time, we will remember six of our departed, six of our sisters in Christ who have died this past year. And Kathy will be the last one of those remembered. And I'm sure, I'm sure that Kathy would be oh so surprised to find herself numbered among the saints. After all, Remember what that word saint means. It literally means a holy one. Now, as you've heard, Kathy was many things in her life. She was a daughter, she was a sister, and she was an aunt. She was also a clerk at Sheeta Bakery for years, for decades. But we can't just rest in half-truths this morning. And the God-honest truth be told, Kathy was all of those things and more. She was also a sinner in need of a Savior. And in that, she's just like you and she's just like me. So how can I stand before the congregation tomorrow? How can I honestly declare Kathy and the other five sisters in Christ to be saints tomorrow morning? Well, for the answer to that, we must turn to the Word of God. And the answer is found in the parts of the Word of God that we tend to skip over because the church has gotten oh so confused about who the saints really are. Listen now to what the Apostle Paul has to say to the first Christians in various parts of the empire. We begin with Rome. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. And this is no isolated statement 
Consider what Paul had to say to other Christians living in scattered cities around the Mediterranean world. To the saints in Ephesus, the believers in Christ Jesus. To the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi. To the holy and believing people in Christ at Colossae. And then at least for me, most remarkably of all, Paul writes this. To the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints, together throughout Achaia. Now how can Paul do this? How can he write to those early Christians, how dare he call them saints? How can he honestly and sincerely believe that the Romans, the Ephesians, the Philippians, the Colossians, and especially those Corinthians, were saints. After all, I'll let you on on a little secret. The early Christians, those first congregations, they were as messed up as any church existing today. And the Corinthians, they're a prime example of this. They were fighting with one another over who their leader, their true leader was. And it got even worse than that. One member had sued another, and another member was engaged in gross sexual immorality. A man was sleeping with his stepmother, and nobody dared to say anything about it. And if all of this wasn't bad enough, Sin had even impacted the Corinthians' worship. And their observance of the Lord's Supper, it made a mockery of Christian fellowship. And if all of this, if all of this wasn't bad enough, at least some in Corinth were now doubting the resurrection. Oh, not Jesus' resurrection. They were doubting the resurrection of their brothers and sisters in Christ their loved ones. So given this reality, this God-honest reality, how on earth can Paul declare the Corinthians to be saints, holy ones? And yet that's exactly what he does, not just in his first letter, but in his second letter as well. Well, in order to answer this question, I need to return to the book of Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews pro proclaims that by the grace of God, Jesus tasted death for everyone. And that includes Kathy, and it also includes you and me. Jesus tasted death for us. And in bringing many people to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. And both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. And let me now personalize this. Both Christ who makes Kathy holy and Christ, who has made you and me and all who believe and are baptized holy, we're now as part of the same family. And Jesus, he's not ashamed to call us his brothers and his sisters. And that's not all. Since the children have flesh and blood, Jesus too shared in our humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That's the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. So make no mistake about it. It is in Christ and in Christ alone we are set free. And it is in Christ and Christ alone that we are made holy, righteous, perfect in God's sight. For when God looks at the likes of Kathy, and God looks at the likes of you and me, and when God looks at the baptized, what does he see? He sees us clothed 
with Jesus Christ himself. And all of this introduction, all of this now leads me to my sermon text for this morning. And not to worry, I'm not getting started. I'm almost over. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So declared God's people 3,000 years ago. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And this passage comes to us from Psalm 116. In Psalm 116, it's a truly magnificent prayer. It's passionate and it's poignant. And at least for me, I can see much of Kathy's life reflected in it. So here is Psalm 116. And can you hear echoes of Kathy's life in it like I do? I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me and I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple-hearted. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I'm greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone's a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. And then we get to our sermon text. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I declare the God honest truth to you this morning. Precious in the sight of the Lord was the death of his servant and his saint, Kathy. And Psalm 16, 116 concludes, Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. Precious and holy in God's sight was Kathy. Precious in the sight of her Lord was her death. And it was only, it was all because of Jesus. And because of Jesus, Kathy, along with all the saints, will see the face of God. That is our hope this day. Amen.
In Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome, we read, When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I invite you to rise as our service continues. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us confess with confidence and joy the faith into which Kathy and we were baptized. We confess together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose to Him. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend your servant, Kathy. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of your blessed saints in light. You may be seated for our final hymn.
When I visited Kathy for the last time, two weeks ago from tomorrow, just a few days, less than 48 hours or so from her last breath, before I left, I gave her the blessing. And this blessing has been used by God's servant for over 3,000 years. It began with Moses' brother Aaron, the first high priest. And Luke tells us that just before Jesus ascended into heaven, that he blessed his followers. Luke does not tell us what blessing he used, but it just may well have been that same blessing that God's people at that stage had heard for over a millennium, the Aaron blessing, the Aaronic blessing. And so we conclude this service now with that same benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Just a few announcements here before we conclude. On behalf of Kathy's family, thank you for joining with them, both to grieve her passing, to honor her life and her legacy, to hear the good news that what we say at a time like this, what God's people, the saints, say at a time like this, is not goodbye, but until we meet again. And I invite you then, after the service is over, you're welcome to go with us. You're encouraged to go with us to Union Cemetery. We travel down Minnehaha, past the McKnight Road, and then on the left-hand side, we will enter Union Cemetery for the committal. And then we'll get back into our cars. We'll continue down, down Highway 10, down Minnehaha Avenue to Radio Drive, where uh, lunch will be served at the machine shed. If you need any further directions, you can talk to the family or, or find me. If you would remain uh, seated in your pews, you will be ushered out. Go in peace. Keep the faith. <laughs>